principles or even doctrines that we can apply in our lives as we go through this life living for the glory of God. Luke chapter 12 verses 16 to 21. Basahin ko po ang 16, sa inyo po yung 17 and then sabay-sabay tayo sa 21. And he spake a parable unto them saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my burns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. But God said unto him, Thou fool, thou fool, thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. Ama, salamat Panginoon sa binasang talata, mga talata. Patawad sa aming kasalanan. Make us, Lord, worthy to receive your word. Give us, Lord, wisdom, understanding, humility to accept, Lord, if we are wrong. And enough grace, O God, to ask you to help us and mend us, Lord. Because it is only you who can change us, who can change our hearts, our lives, our thoughts, our direction. So I pray, Lord, that you will speak to us through this message and we will understand, O oh God, how it is to really live this life while we are here on earth. Help us, O oh God, to lay up treasures in heaven and to be rich toward you, Lord, that we may be able, O oh God, to glorify your name. Help me, Lord, give me wisdom that I may be able, Lord, to help your people see the truth in this passage. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to study about this uh, fool. And I would like to uh, entitle the message, Affluent Fool's Day. Affluent Fool's Day. Now, if you're going to notice, if you will look back in your life, and if you're going to look at the life of other people, you will notice that when life is going at its best and when we have the most that we can have in our life, usually that is the time that we act the most foolishly. When supplies are enough or more than enough or when we are celebrating a great victory or if somebody will praise us, we take such opportunity to show who we really are. And most of the time, we fumble and we fall. If, when we are poor, we trust in the Lord. But when all of a sudden we became rich, we have forgotten the Lord. When we are a nobody, we always fall on our knees and pray to God. But when we became great in our own sight, we trust in our abilities in our skills and lay God aside in our lives. When people praise us, our ears usually clapped even though we say to God, be the glory. So these things have become something that will really show who a particular person was. Sabi nga sa, sa Tagalog, nung nagkaroon ka ay nagkaroon ka na hindi, hindi na mabali yung iyong leeg. Hindi ka na makayuko. Hindi ka na ma-approach. Ano ka na? Uh, ang tawag nila, hindi ka na ma-rich. When you became rich. So why do we show our foolishness in such inappropriate times? You know, the simple explanation is that even though we are saved, we are still sinners. And our old Adamic nature will always take the opportunity to show itself. 
That is the reason why Paul says that we need to mortify our body, that we need to count our bodies as dead, as given to God, so that we can live a life wherein the Lord Jesus Christ is the one living, and if Jesus Christ will be the one to live through us, then we can live a life that is glorifying to God. But when our self shows, then it's going to mess up every situation. We are sinners. God is perfect. God is wise. And we are foolish. And yes, and when times are good, then we always go down with a case of affluenza. When we are affluent. When things are more than enough, when things are uh, becoming better, when things are smooth, it is usually the time that we look at ourselves and we say, I made it. I was able to do this in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, God wanted to enrich us, but most of the time, we are not in a situation or circumstance for the blessing of God to be given to us. Why? Because we're still immature and we do not know how to handle the blessings of God. You see, many of the great men of God, they fell during the times of great victory. Look at Elijah. After that momentous victory on top of the Mount of Carmel, he went down into depression. Even King David, because of the so many victories that he received in almost endless wars, decided to stay back and he fell for Bathsheba. You name almost every great man of God in the Bible, they fell after a great victory. Do you remember Peter? He just confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And after a few verses, Jesus says, Get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Because of our flesh. You see, our flesh is not designed to be praised. Hindi ba napapasin kapatid? Hindi ho, design ito. Itong laman ito na purihin. Pag ito po, pinuri, aangat ng aangat. Aarangkada ng aarangkada. At tarating ang panahon, sasabihin niya, Talagang magaling ako. We are not designed to be praised. We are not designed to be honored. We are not designed to be lifted up and put on a lofty pedestal. Why? Because our tendency is to go down because of this place. That is the reason why until we are still in this world, we will experience disappointment. We will experience discouragement. We will experience problem. There will be depression. But praise God, one day, God will take us away from this world. And that is the only time that we will experience the best life for all eternity. We are not designed for that. Kaya kapatid, ingat-ingat tayong pumupuri ng tao, yayabang yan. Ingat-ingat tayong nagtataas ng tao, mas itataas niyan ang sarili niya. And then, ingat, ingat tayo sa blessing. Why? These blessings can turn into curse in our life. You see, when we can hold on to something, we usually lose our grip with God. Bakit kasi may pangahawakan, may babalikan, may papupuntahan, may gagawin. And that is the reason I'm, I am telling you that if you do not regard the church as God regarded the church, then you can be lackadaisical in your service to the Lord and you will not even mind if you will leave that church. Why? Because you said, there are still other churches that I can go to. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is true, but what is the reason why you leave the church in the first place? You need to understand that. Why? Because God put you where you are for a reason. And that reason is for you to become a better Christian than the first time that you were placed in that position by the Lord. So whenever there is a blessing, let us not forget our benefactor, the one who gives us all, and that is God. So we can say that affluenza is a disease of the love of money, of the love of self, and the love of being lifted up 
in this world. But thank God, even though there is a disease, there is a cure, and that cure is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? You see, sometimes affluence can make you a, actually most of the time, affluence can make you a fool instead of making you a person who is appreciative of God. You see, the Bible mentions several fools in the Bible. In Psalms chapter 14, verse 1, we have what we call the unbelieving fool, where the Bible says, the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. Only a fool can say there is no God. Because only a fool will not see the hands of God in all the creation and even when you look at himself. The Bible says they are corrupt. They have, gone abomin they have done abominable works. There is none that do it good. So there is what we call the unbelieving fool. Every person who do not believe in God, every person who is not saved, the Bible says, is a fool. I don't care if his name is Steve Jobs. I don't care if the name is a Henry C. I don't care if the name is Lucia Time. I don't care if the name is Duterte or whatever. If you don't believe in God and you are not saved, then you're a fool. That's what the Bible says. The unbelieving fool. Fool. The ignorant fool. Proverbs 1 7. The ignorant fool. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. You see, ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is foolishness. Why? Because information is available. Because the truth is available. Why remain ignorant when information is available to you? Why remain of, uh, ignorant if the truth is right under your nose? That is the reason why all the members of any church that is following a doctrine that is not according to the word of God is an ignorant fool. Every pastor who is teaching something that is not according to the word of God is an ignorant fool. Why? Because he already has the word of God. He has the Holy Spirit and yet he is teaching something that is not according to the word of God. Any pastor who teaches that first fruits offering is for the church is a fool. Any member who gives first fruits offering is a fool. Why? Because they don't even study the word of God. You see, we have no excuse. Because we have the word of God. We can be like the Bereans. We can sit down. We can open the word of God. We can pray. We can trust the Holy Spirit. And we can go to the internet. And we can Google things. And all the information are available. All the information are present. And yet, you remain ignorant. They despise wisdom. You teach them what is right with evidence from the Word of God, and yet they will despise what is according to the Word of God. That, that is the ironic thing about, about Baptists. You see, we declare that we believe the Bible. In our distinctive, we say that the Bible is our final authority and yet we do so many things that is not according to the scriptures we are parrots you see when, when, when we see or hear a talking parrot we are amazed right but listen they do not know what they are saying They are just repeating what they have heard. Those that registered in their small mind are the things that they will repeat again and again and again and again without their understanding. So when the pirates say, handsome, 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 he doesn't, the, the pirate doesn't know what he's talking about. Amen. There was a, a pirate in front of San Pedro Laguna. Then do you remember that? If you will pass there, and they will say, "Hi, pang it, pang it." And then when you look at the pirate, say, "Come on, come on, come on, come on." There was this Bible student who was uh, castigated by Pastor uh, Lorena. He, he was uh, actually a, a, a paddle during that time, and then he went out of the uh, the office. 
and he passed by that place and then the pirate said hey pirate pirate and he took a stone and uh, he stoned that pirate <laughs> and the owner is very angry why because he got angry of what the pirate said but he doesn't realize that the pirate does not even know what he's saying and sadly too many pastors are standing behind the pulpit parroting something that they do not understand I've already asked many pastors to lay down their lesson their teaching regarding first fruits offering and they cannot do it I have read a book authored by the so called father of first fruits and I saw it all wrong the only verse that they can read is Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. That's it. They cannot prove it. But they will say, since I gave my first fruits, God bless me. But they cannot answer when you say, how about those who were not blessed by God after they have given their first fruits? They will make an excuse and they will say, because they have given it not in faith. Ignorant fool. Ignorant fool. Amen? You show to them that the Apostle Paul transferred his membership at least two times in the Bible and yet they will insist that there is no such thing as transfer of membership. Why? Because they will tell you wherever you go, you send back your tithes and your offering to your mother church you see even though you show them the evidence and even though they could not show any evidence they will just make an excuse that church is a family that even when you go abroad you send your money back to your family and their final authority is their logic not the bible anymore and they will say, when you go there, the church there is like a restaurant. My. Their church is a family, while the church where they will go is a restaurant. You only pay for what you eat. That's why when I announce, we have two people attending here. But they do not want to transfer their membership before. And their pastor said, the church there is just a restaurant. I said, I prepared steak. And the price is $40. Plus service charge, plus tax. And then I look at their offering. They did not pay nag one, two, three. Pinakasan tayo ng hindi nagbabayad sa restaurant. You see? The ignorant fool. And I know I am going to have, when anyway, at least the point is, not too many will watch this uh, preaching. Not too many will hear about this preaching. But if not, oh, I am going to receive so many criticism. And I will even be hit below the belt when I say this, that Many pastors in the Philippines right now are ignorant of the truth of the word of God. Nako naririnig ko na yabang nung madlang awa. Ang pangalan niya hindi naman madlang awa, madlang yabang. Naririnig ko na. Pero hindi naman handang makipag-usap. Patungkol din sa sinabi ko. Hindi naman handang makipag-usap patungkol sa katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos. May pastor nga, pag may guest speaker sila, naka-live. Pag siya nag-preach, hindi naka-live eh. Bakit? Kasi mahahalata. Paulit-ulit lang naman. Mahahalata na nung unang panahon, yung pa rin naman ngayon. Makikita nga actually. Bakit? Kasi nga, hindi na nag-aaral. Wala nang panahon para mag-aaral. Pero may panahon para makipag-fellowship. May panahon para maging speaker. May panahon para mag-abroad. May panahon para mamasyal. May panahon para makipag-fellowship sa maraming pastor. Pero walang panahon na umupo at pag-aralan ng salita ng Diyos bago i-preach sa kanilang congregation. They do not have the time. Why? 
they are so busy doing non-essentials than the most important thing that they need to do in life. And there are so many members that are ignorant fools that even when you taught them the word of God with enough evidence, they will continue doing their life of ignorance. You see? That's why it's very hard. You may be a pastor who is diligent in studying the word of God. You may have people who are not even interested. And sometimes some pastors are becoming discouraged to really study the word of God. They will just preach something that will tickle your fancy. That will make you feel comfortable. So that everything will be okay. They will not appreciate sound doctrine. Remember our uh, preaching last week? The end time Christians, they will have itching ears. They will heap unto themselves teachers that will make them feel good about themselves. Proverbs 12, 15. The self-righteous fool. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You see, this is what we call the self-righteous fool. And many, many times we justify what we do. Even though it is something that is unjustifiable. And you now fall into the category of the self-righteous fool. Everybody who contradicts you is wrong. Because you are always right. Everything that does not go your way is going the wrong way because they do not agree with you. Because in your eyes you thought that your way is the only way that is right. The only way that is, that is acceptable. But God says you are a fool because sometimes or most of the times it is only right in your own eyes. Hindi ba napapansin pag may gusto tayong gawin? We try to find alibis. Hanap tayo ng dahilan para tumama. Kahit talagang walang tama. Magmamanufacture tayo ng dahilan para maging katanggap-tanggap po at least may lasa. Sabi nga sa English, para yung ating decision will become somewhat palatable. Even though they are really nonsensical. Even though they are not even biblical, but we, we try to find ways to show people that what we're doing is right. Why? Because in our own eyes, they are right. Ladies and gentlemen, if the Bible is the final authority, open the book, the chapter, and the verse. Rightly divide it, and nobody in their right mind who loves God will argue with you. Amen. Amen. They will not argue with you. That's why now on Facebook, when they post something, or they will answer and you will say, chapter and verse, they will just ignore it. Why? Because they are just saying what is right in their own eyes. But something that may not be right according to God. And because of that, Proverbs 49. For fools mock, make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. So these are the what we call the mocking fool. They mock at sin. They are sarcastic in how they approach things in life. Kita mo yung mga LGBT, yung mga mocking fool ito eh. They mock at sin. Gay pride. You see, if they are in their right mind, how can you even say gay pride? Pride is a sin. Amen. Why? Because in the word pride is something that is acceptable or even sought for. But we know as a child of God that pride goeth before destruction. That is why they're going to be destroyed without realizing it. Because they mock at sin. 
Biro mo, gay pride, kaya niya respect us pagkatapos nagahali ka ng lalaki sa lalaki, babae sa babae. Pagkatapos lalaki nakahubad, tapos yung lalaki meron siyang malaking dibdib. Tapos nakapako ang, ang supposedly Panginoong Heso Kristo na bakla. Tapos sabi nila, respect us. They make a mock at sin. How can you respect them? We love them because they have souls. But we do not like and we hate what they are doing. Because they are mocking at sin. They are becoming fools without realizing it. And then there is in Romans 1.22, the self-sufficient fool professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. These are the, the self-made people. The worldly successful people who thought they have figured out everything, but the truth of the matter is that they have not figured out their eternity. Sa kanila, hindi naman mahalaga yung eternity ang mahalaga sa kanila, yung ngayon lang eh. Akala nila kasi pagkatapos sa ngayon, wala na. Hindi nila alam, maiksi lang ang ngayon at mahaba ang magpakilan pa man. And they thought that they are wise by not believing in God. By not believing that there is a heaven and an earth and, and a hell, by not believing that there is salvation. They are self-sufficient. They thought that everything is within themselves, not realizing that we are created by God. And then the rich fool, the one that we're going to study today. In Luke chapter 12, verse number 16. He was mentioned there where God said to him in the following verses, Thou fool, God says, This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Truly, the love of money is the root of all evil. But praise God, because God can help us win over the love of money. Amen. And this is what we are going to look at today. And by the grace of God, learn something from the life of this fool in order for us to become wise by the grace of God. Let us look at the progression of the things that happen in this uh, in the life of this man, in the parable that was given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, first we can see that man's wealth lead to man's will. Man's wealth leads to man's will. Look at verses uh, 16, 17, until verse 19. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. That's a blessing, amen? Whenever there is plentiful, then you can see the hands of God. You should see the hands of God. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. This is the, the first thing that is wrong. He thought only of himself when this blessing comes. And this led to man's, to his own will. He was blessed by God. Wealth came into his life, but it leads to his will. Look at the I will. He said, I will pull down my burns. If he has no wealth, he will not say, I will pull down my burns. Do you realize that? He says, I will build greater barns, bigger one. If he has no wealth, he will not say, I will build bigger barns. He says, I will store my fruits. If he has no wealth, he will not say, I will store my fruits. He says, I will say to my soul. If he has no wealth, he will not say, I will say to my soul, I will eat, drink, and be merry. If there is no wealth, you cannot say that to yourself. You cannot say that I will go to this place. You cannot say that I will buy this thing. You cannot say, this is what I'm going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, if it is God's will, then we can do this and we can do that. It is not because of your will. So man's wealth leads to man's will. Look at Proverbs 1.32. Proverbs 1.32, this is good. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. 
the prosperity of fool shall destroy them. Why? Because when prosperity came into your life, you thought that you can do whatever you want to do independent of God. Yun ang problema. Pagka sabi ko nga kanina, pag may pinanghahawakan ka ng iba, bibitawan mo na ang Diyos. Pero hanggat wala kang hawak na iba, nakahawak ka sa Diyos. Kaya kadalasan, ang ating pananampalataya is only a faith of circumstance, but it is not a real faith. Hey. It is a faith of circumstance. Eh, wala akong maasa. Hindi sa Diyos ako asa. Wala man ako matatakpuan. It is a Diyos. Eh, paano kung meron na? Hmm. Paano kung meron ng BDO na matatakbuhan ka? Hmm. Paano kung meron ng merong nanay-tatay na matatakbuhan ka? Paano kung meron ng asawa na matatakbuhan ka? Paano kung may iba na hahawa ka pa ba sa Diyos? Hmm. Ito hindi. Nung wala, hindi naman sinasabi ito eh. Pero ngayon meron, nasabi niya. Because there is now something that he can hold on to. There is now something that he can trust. Ladies and gentlemen, real faith is trusting God through poverty or through richness. It doesn't matter. If you have nothing, if you have something, you will hold on to God. Like the Apostle Paul says, I know how to abound and I know how to be abased. But in all these things, Paul was not moved in his faith and trust in the Lord. Nung wala ka pang pera, mahal na mahal ang mga member. Bakit? Kasi alam niya doon manggagaling ang ikabubuhay. Abay, nung dumami ng pera, may member lang na nagkamali o member na walang maibibigay. Layas! Hindi ko kayo kailangan! Abay noon eh. Kapatid, mag-isip ka naman muna. Baka mapapag-usapan natin maayos yan. Hmm. Why? Meron ka nang pinangahawakan eh. But this is something that you do not realize. Man's wealth leads to man's woe. W-O-E. Woe. Look at verse number 20. But God said unto him, The woe of being a fool. You are a fool. Why? Because you're not the one who made that. You're not the one who gathered that. The Bible in Deuteronomy 18 says that it is God who gave us the power to get wealth, that our strength came from God, that without God, we are nothing. And yet, when we have something, we thought that we can do whatever we want to do. That's why God said, fool. The woe of being a fool. You see, I saw so many Christians that when wealth came into their lives, you will find them in other countries even on a Sunday. Not worshiping and serving God. Why? Because they have money to buy a plane ticket. They can be in Japan. They can be in Saipan. They can see Peter Pan. Amen? And they can order pizza pan. A pizza pie pan. They go to different places. They do not contribute to the church anymore, but they spend their money on pleasurable things in this world. They may be rich, but they are a fool. Why? They are not rich toward God. Kapatid, ang tunay na yaman yung yaman sa Diyos. Bakit? Yung yaman sa Diyos, hindi nawawala yung yaman dito. Nawawala, nananakaw. Nagpe-fade. Nakukurap. And then, ito pinanghawakan mo. Kaya sabi ng, ng Diyos, you're a fool. The fool, the woe of being a fool, number two, the woe of sudden death. Ay, ito plano ko for next year, ito mga pupuntahan ko. Sino nagsabi sa yung buhay ka pa next year? Sino nagsabi sa yung buhay ka pa bukas? Ano mga kapatid, pag ako gabi, magpe-pray na ako, matutulog na ako, pagpikit ko, hindi ko na po alam kung ako'y didilat pa. We are 
might not even promise of tomorrow. Yes, we are promised of an eternal life, but we are not promised even of tomorrow. Nobody can know tomorrow except God. That is why James says, if it is God's will, I will do this. We will go there. We will do that only if it is God's will. And then you make plans for the whole year. Plans that do not even include God. Ay, magdi-Disney lang tayo. Magne-never lang tayo. Magbabay lang tayo. Lahat na lang puro land. Nakaplano ka na. The woe of sudden death. Kagabi, kinabahan ako. Hindi naghilig si Maribel. Kabado ako. Pero nawala ang kabako, nagsalita naman. Sabi niya, The Lord Jesus Christ, kanya. Tanggapin mo, The Lord Jesus Christ, kanya. Papampira, nag-pay-preach ka ako! At andaan mo, napaniginig mo kagabi? Limang beses! Talagang, ma- ma- matutulog na ako. Eh, 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 ang Panginoon! Tanggapin mo ang Panginoon! Sabi niya, Winiwitnessan ako ka ako. Habang natutulog. Limang beses yun. Ako, ano, ano, meron siya, siya. Ang kamatayan, ik. Kanya, ano yung kamatayan, ik. <laughs> Hindi ko ma... <laughs> Sabi niya, kamatayan, ik. Kanya. <laughs> ano to ka ako? Tapos biglang papasok sa isa may mga horror na napanood mo. Nabigla lang baka pagdilat ko, naka yung mukha niya nasa ano. Ah! <laughs> Kaya ayoko na halos dumilat. <laughs> Kung ano pinagsasasabi. Tapos ang nahimik, oh, tinignan ko. Mahinga pa pa ito. Tapos biglang, ayun, okay ka ako. <laughs> Tulog na ako. Oh, the woe of sudden death. Hindi mo alam. Merong picture sa baseball, 27 years old. May laro sila sa isang lugar. Nagpunta si laro, natulog. Sa hotel kasi, naka-hotel yung mga yun eh. Hindi na nag-isang patay. Hindi naman nag-suicide. Wala na patay. Ilan ng ano, yung mga napakita natin sa ano, napakaraing gabati ng condolence. May mga matandang namatay, may mga batang namatay. The woe of sudden death. Ang dahil mong plano, kapatid, hindi mo sinasama ang Diyos. Alam mo bang buhay ka pa? Pagkatapos ng ilang panahon. The woe of losing it all, not only that, but in just in a twinkling of an eye, you can lose everything. I remember those people in Bacolor, Pampanga, where they have big houses. Where they have big walls and then all of a sudden Pinotubo erupted and everything went down. The ashes. From something to nothing. From abundance to poverty. One click. It can be all taken away from you. The woe of losing it all. And then the woe of divine judgment. When God called you a fool, you are in trouble. Amen? And he was called by God a fool. He received the benefits, but he forgot the giver. You see, but pastor, he is an unbeliever. How can God bless him? Well, the goodness of God leadeth man unto repentance. God is good to all. He make it to rain upon all and make it the sun to shine upon all. That is the nature of God. God is a good God. God is a perfect God. God is a loving God. When He died, He died for all. Why? Because His goodness should lead man into repentance, but sometimes the goodness of God make man believe in themselves than believing in God. So, what are the reasons why God called this rich man a fool? So this is now the message that we are going to study today. What are the reasons why God called the rich man a fool? Number one, because of his attitude toward God. Because of his attitude toward God. First thing that you will notice in this parable is he never thanked God 
for anything. There is no mention of thanking God. There is no mention of to God be the glory. There is no mention of uh, another person doing that for him. It is only about him self. He left God out of his life altogether. It is as if he can live life without God. So ladies and gentlemen, it is a bad attitude if we are going to let God out of the things that are happening in our lives. Anything that we receive, good or bad, to God be the glory. Thank God. Amen? The Bible says that we must thank God in everything. In everything, good or bad. Whatever it is, why? Knowing that all things work together for good eventually. So what is your attitude towards God in the things that are happening in your life? You have a job. Do you thank God? You receive money. Do you thank God? Do you put God first? Do you eventually realize that everything came from God? What is your attitude toward God? You get married. Do you thank God for your partner? Do you thank God for your child? Do you thank God for your church? Do you thank God for your friends? Do you thank God for your problems? Do you thank God in everything that's happening in your life? And is it your desire to glorify God in everything that you're going to do? He has a wrong attitude towards God. Number two, because of his attitude toward others. Not only toward God, but toward others. His interest was in things and possession instead of people. You see, there was no mention of relatives here. I do not know if he is married, but his wife was not even mentioned. I do not know if he has children, but his children were not even mentioned. All that is mentioned here is himself. This is the height of selfishness and therefore the height of foolishness. He ignored the first and the second commandment. The first commandment is to love God with all our heart. And the second commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself. He completely ignored all of these things. He only saw himself. No? Dumat, meron ka ano, wala ka masyadong nagagawa, hingi ka ng hingi ng tulong sa iba, sa kakulangan mo, and then bigla kang gumaling, at pagkatapos nagkaroon ka ng achievement, at napatingin ka sa salamin, ibang ka talaga. <laughs> talaga ibang klase ka. <laughs> Di ba? Sabi nga nga, you handsome devil, devil ka talaga. Di ba? N- nung biglang, May sinabi ka na. Dati wala kang sinabi. Talagang, tulungan niyo ako. Ay, salamat, salamat. Ngayon, bo, 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 bo. ako pa. Naging ganun ka na. Ito ganun siya. Inisip niya lang sarili niya. No regard for other, other people. I, rem- I remember a story that I read about a a uh, notorious miser, a person who is so stingy, that in their community there is a, what you call a yearly charity fund. And that year, the uh, chairman of the uh, community charity uh, institution, charitable institution, went to him and told him, Sir, our records show that despite your wealth, you have never contributed even once to our charitable undertakings. That is according to our records. And then he looked at the chairman and he said, do your records show that I have an elderly mother who was left penniless when my father died? Uh, No, sir, it's not in our record. Do your records show that I have a sister who is ill and in need of great medical attention. Is that in your record? Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, it is not in our record. Do you, does your record show that I have a disabled brother who is unable to work? No, 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 sir. It is not in our record. Is, that, is, is this in your record that I have a widowed sister with small children who cannot feed themselves? No, sir. 
it is not in our record. You see? I do not even give a dime to them. Why would I give a dime to your charitable institution? That is the attitude of this rich fool. Amen? Sabi niya, nanay ko may sakit, di ko tinutulungan. Yung kapatid kong may malilit na anak na hindi niya mapakain, hindi ko tinutulungan. Yung kapatid ko na disabled, hindi ko tinutulungan. Yung nanay ko na mahirap na hirap, hindi ko tinutulungan. Kayo pa! O, oh, di, yun, nakala mo. Meron siyang sasabihing matino eh. And this is the, the same as this. The rich fool had the wrong attitude toward God and toward others. Amen? You see, when you have a blessing, you must think of sharing your blessing to other people. You see, it is never enjoyable to eat alone. Meron na sa mga 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 pagkain, pero ikaw lang mag-isa. Hindi ka mag-enjoy. Gusto mo yung may cashier ka. Ay hindi, pastor, enjoy ako. Ay snacking blade ka. Ay, yung sarap nitong ubas. Oh, yung, 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 talaga. Ay, enjoy na, enjoy ako. Sarap, sarap. Hindi, iba yung may cashier ka. Kain, kapatid. Kain. Oh. Kain. Oh. Wag lang yung matataka, ha? baka maubusan ka. You cannot enjoy life alone. Can you enjoy a big house alone? Isipin mo, pag maglilinis na, ay busit ka, naku, maglilinis na naman, umpisaan ko sa 89th floor. Pero mawawalisin mo, ang pababa. Sabi, ilang taon ka na naglilinis, pangatlong taon na ho ito. Okay na. Oo, pero babalik na naman ako, marumi na yun eh. Pero mo buong buhay mo, paglilinis na lang, you cannot enjoy. Can you enjoy traveling alone? Di ba iba yung nasa Disneyland ka, may kasama ka? Lalo na kung may kasama ka mga bata. At parang ka na rin bata. Di ba? Nakikipag-agawan ko pa sa kanila. Hindi ba ang saya? Eh, ikaw lang mag-isa. Ang, ang... Selfie. Ganda nga. <laughs> Blessings came into his life, but he ignored people. He only looked at himself. Number three, because of his attitude toward life and money. Immediately, his thoughts were on retirement and ease. He says, I already have uh, made it for many, many years. I am just going to sit down and I am going to enjoy my life. And that's about it. He ignored the fact that one day, He's going to need other people. Kaya yung mga mayayamang swapang, yung walang tinutulungan, pagtanda niyan, hindi niya alam kung sinong makakasama niya. Ay hindi ba? Kaya yung mga matatalino, pagpatanda na tulong ng tulong. Para pagdating ng panahon na kailangan nilang ibang tao, maaasahan nila. Bakit? Kasi naasahan sila. Amen? He completely ignored the fact that no man is an island. That you will eventually need somebody to aid you. And he forgot that God is the owner of all the things that he had. That is the greatest mistake that we can uh, do in our lives to think that something even belongs to us. Kaya kapatid, we need to thank God for everything that we are receiving in life. God is so gracious to each and every one of us. Look at uh, Deuteronomy 8.18. I am going to read several verses that will show how good God is, how blessed we are because of God. Deuteronomy 8.18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Remember the Lord thy God for it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth. Whatever you achieve, it is because of God. Why? That He may establish His covenant which He swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Because God promised us He will supply our needs, then He's going to give you wealth in order to get that supply from Him. Not only that, Jeremiah chapter 9, 23 to 24. We will read several verses and then we will end uh, uh, after one more point. Thus saith the Lord, 
Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. See? There are people, when they, because they are wise, because they are intelligent, they look down at other people. Accounting that, that intelligence is a product of their uh, diligence or whatever. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches. Ang may mga pastor na walang ginawa kung hindi kunin yung glory dahil dun sa mga pinagkatiwala sa kanila ng Panginoon. Nagkaroon lang ng church na may elevator, akala mo kung sino. Nagkaroon ng church na may escalator, akala mo kung sino. Tayo kahit may calculator, hindi tayo nagmamalaki. Amen? Akala mo kung sino na. Sabi niya, let not the rich man glory in his riches. Akala mo naman magkakaganin siya kundi sa biyaya ng Panginoon lamang na dapat ang kaluwalatin, ibigay lamang sa Diyos. Next verse. But let him that glorieth glory in this. Oh. Let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord. Amen. Which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, rich or poor, you glory. Why? Because you know God and you are saved. Amen. That's the only thing that we can glory about. That when we die, we will go to heaven. Mahirap man o mayaman. Pare-pareho pupuntahan natin. Sa kaligtasan, hindi lamang ang mayaman. Sa kaligtasan, hindi lamang ang matalino. Sa kaligtasan, hindi lamang ang makapangyarihan. Sa kaligtasan, pare-parehong ligtas. Pare-parehong makikita ang Diyos. Amen? Look at Matthew 6.24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon because this rich man chose to serve mammon, he forgot about God. Pastor, hindi. Pwede namang mayaman ako, naglilingkot ako sa Diyos. Pwede. Pero hindi pwedeng naglilingkot ka sa yaman at naglilingkot ka sa Diyos. Hindi pwede yun. Look at Mark chapter 10, 23 to 25. And Jesus looked round about and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Lugi nga mayayaman pagdating sa kaligtasan eh. Bakit? Ang hirap daw sa kanila na makapasok sa kaharian ng Diyos. Bakit? Kasi meron silang sariling kaharian eh. At gustong-gusto nila yung kaharian na yun. Dahil yung kaharian nila, maginhawa. Yung kaharian nila, maganda. Yung kaharian nila, may swimming pool. Yung kaharian nila, malaking bahay. Yung kaharian nila, magagandang sasakyan. Yung kaharian nila, mga garbong uh, kasangkapan. Yung kaharian nila, punong-puno ng mga alahas. Yung kaharian nila, sagana sa pagkain. Kaya ayaw nilang iwanin yung kaharian na yun upang pumasok pa sa ibang kaharian. How hardly? Look at 24. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered it again and said unto him, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches. You see? Hindi lang mayaman yung nagtitiwala sa kanilang yaman. Kita mo yung, yung lumapit sa ano na mayaman? Sabi niya, pamigay mo lahat. Sundin mo ako, hindi sumunod. Bakit? Ang tiwala niya nasa yaman, hindi kay Kristo. Hindi yung pagpapamigay niya ng kayawanan ng kaligtasan, kung hindi yung pagtitiwala niya kay Kristo. O, hindi ba? Luke 25, verse 25. He said, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Biro mo madali pa raw sa kamelyo pumasok sa butas ng karayong. Pastor, paano yun? Hindi naman ho yung karayom na ginagamit sa pansulse. Sa is noon, ang mga camel, bago pa inumin, meron silang dadaanan na kung saan yuyuko sila, gagapang papunta doon sa tubig. Masikip yun. Mas madali pa daw sa kamel yung maka daan doon kesa sa mayaman na makapasok sa kaya ng Diyos. Why? Because they trust in riches. And you cannot 
Trust God if you trust in religion. Sige mo itong 1 Timothy 6, 9, and 10. Napakaganda. 1 Timothy 6, 9, and 10. But they that will be rich. Yan, ha? Sino yan? Ito yung mga gustong yumaman. Hmm. Masama bang yumaman? Hindi. Amen. Hindi masama. Pero yung gusto mong yumaman, check mo muna ang dahilan mo. Bakit mo gustong yumaman? Hmm. Pastor, gusto kong yumaman para matulungan ng maraming tao at ang gawain ng Panginoon ay masupply ang pangangailangan. Therefore, hindi kaya yaman. Sapagkat anuman magkakaroon ka, dadaan lang sa'yo patungo doon sa ano? Pangangailangan. Yayaman ka sa Diyos, pero hindi sa mundong ito. May pastor nga, eh, pinipreach ito eh. Kasi pag pastor nga, preach mo na ito eh. Nakatira pa sa ano ha, hindi man first class na city ha. Abay, pambihira ang bahay eh. Materialis puertes. Ang mga kasangkapan, kagaganda. Ala eh, talagang sasabihin ko sa inyo, ala eh. Hindi ko sasabihin kung taga saan, ay hindi ko sasabihin. Pero ala eh, ay talaga naman ah. Kapag ka, ikay nakapasok sa bahay, kay may hiyang upo. Abay, parang bahay ng artista eh. Eh, 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 eh. Kung magpalit nun sa sakin eh, halos taon-taon, oh, eh, etong malangkot. Ganun na yung pastor, nakikita ng mga membro, abay, mga membro, utu-utu pa rin. Napatuloy pa rin ang pagsabot daw, na hindi naman yung lulokot yung pastor. Ala eh! Oo. Oh. Yung nakakalungkot. Aba, aba, eh, talaga-laga ng bahay na puputulo pa ng kuryente. Bakit? Eh, hindi nagbibigay. At pagkatapos, eh, may dalawa tatlong ko pa rin kukunin sa mga miyembro yung pambayad ng kuryente. Oh, sipin mo yun. Hindi ko sasabihin kung taga saan. Wala eh, baka malaman niyo. Hindi <laughs> ba? Oh. But they that will be rich, Pastor, gusto ko yung maman. Okay. Sabi, fall into temptation. Kaya mo ba yung temptation ng pagyaman? Kaya mo ba yung mga tukso ang haharapin mo para kayo maman? Ilan na ang taong nangarap yung maman, lumayo sa simbahan, ano nangyari sa buhay? Ang malungkot, hindi pa rin yung maman. Hindi, walang biro. Ilan na? And a snare, pati bong. And into many foolish and heartful lust. Why? Kung wala kang pera, hindi man papasok yung mga lust na yun sa'yo. Mas maraming pera, mas maraming tukso. Mas maraming pera, mas maraming magagawang mali. Eh pero pastor, mas maraming pera, maraming magagawang tama. Oo kung bibitawan mo yung pera. Pero kadalasan hindi. Which drone men in destruction and perdition, kapahamakan. Yung mga gusto yumaman. Kasi pag gusto mong yumaman, ano ang goal mo? Yumaman, ano ang, ang plan of action mo? Whatever that will make me rich. Usually ganun. Every opportunity na pwedeng yumaman. Hindi na ano yung mga ano, mga gusto yumaman, lahat ng scam na pasok. Napasok lahat ng iskam. Ilan ng pastor ang bumagsak, simba ang bumagsak sa paghahanap ng treasure? Ilan ng pastor ang natabunan? Uy, natabunan sa paghuhukay ng ginto? May isang pastor nga, yung bakura nila, binakod na ganun. Eh. Talagang paggabi, hinuhukay niya. Eh. Nakadali siya Arnola. Ayun, ang yaman na nakuha niya. Oh. Ano yung gold-gold na lumabas noon? Yung gold-gold, yung nadali yung salipa, ano yun? Gold Quest. Oh, ilan? 
ang muntik na mabilang kong pastor, mga miyembro, dahil dyan. Ikaw, pastor, hindi ka nabiktima. Nabiktima na ho ako. Ay, di gusto mo rin yung maman. Gusto ko rin yung maman. Meron akong purpose. Yung maman ka naman, hindi pa. Kasi, hindi siguro ako yayaman. At, kami nga, nag-usap kami mga, ng mga anak ko eh. Sabi ko, ako, hanggat buhay pa, sikasuhin ko na yung iiwan ko sa inyo. Kasi kung ano yung matitira, uubusin namin ka ako ng mami mo yan. Sana magawa namin, huwag kaming tuksuhin ng jablo, Uubusin namin yan sa pagtulong, sa pag-establish sa mga churches sa Pilipinas. Hmm. Kaya ako, pag ito, meron ka na, meron ka na, meron ka na, abay, talo-talo na tayo. Hmm, ganoon. Kung payamanin ako ng Diyos, gagamitin ko doon sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Verse 10. May sabi dyan. For the love of man is the root of all evil. Oh, see? Mahal mo ba pera? Dapat hindi. Kasi hindi bang mahal mo ayaw mong bitawan? Mahal na mahal mo yung pera mo. Kaya hindi mo mabitawan. <laughs> Ito yung aking ka lang, mahal na mahal kita. Ayoko nawawaglit ka sa aking piling. Ayoko mawawala ka. Mahal na mahal kita. Huwag mo akong iwan. Oh, see? Ang mahalin mo ang Diyos para hindi mo hahayaang malayo ka sa Diyos. Ang Diyos kasi hindi lalayo eh. Oh, mahalin mo ang Diyos, huwag pera. Which while some coveted after they have heard from the faith. Hmm, see? Ito, may masasaktan. Yan talaga buhay. Sabi ko sa inyo, you will find all the reasons that you can get in order to justify what you are doing. And you may be sincere, but sincerity is not the final authority. Ilang magulang iniwan ng mga anak na mga bata pa sapagkat sabi nila, kailangan kong kumita para sa kanilang kinabukasan, hindi ba makagagawa ang Diyos na manatili ka sa kanila, palakihin mo sila na may takot sa Diyos at tulungan ka ng Diyos na ibigay ang kanilang mga pangangailangan. Ay, hindi, wala akong makikita ang trabaho. Naghanap ka ba? Nagsumikap ka ba? Inihanda mo ba ang sarili mo? Naharapin ang lahat at tanggapin ang lahat. Alang-alang sa iyong mga anak. Tapos magtataka, naglaki ng mga anak mo, bakit ganyan sila yung paghihirap ko? Hindi. Nagkaganon sila kasi hindi mo sila ipinorma nung bata pa. Kaya hanggat may mag... Kaya ako lagi kong tanong, pagpupunta ka ba ron, mayroon bang posibilidad na madala mo, pamilya mo, pagdating ng panahon? Pag oo, sige. Pag hindi, wag. Hindi matutumbasan ng pera yung kalidad ng buhay spiritually na maibibigay mo sa anak mo. Hindi papalitan ng pera yan. You know? Erred from the faith. Nagkamali ka sa pananampalataya. At ano ginawa mo? Pinuno mo ang sarili mo ng sangkatutak na kalungkutan. Di ba? Napakarami. Actually, hindi na nga sa mga believer pe. Kaya nga nagawa yung kantang, Napakasakit, Kuya Eddie, ang sinapit ng aking buhay. Napakasakit, Kuya Eddie, di ko alam kung ano ang gagawin. Bakit umalis sa dalawa anak, pagbalik tatlo. Sabi niya, antindi ko, naka-abroad na ako, nabuntis ko pa, misis ko. Kanya. Oh, di ba? Ang hirap. Sakit, punong-puno ng kalungkutan, napanood yung pinikulang anak. Hmm. John, John, John! John, 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 John! Hmm. Sabi ni Vilma Santos. Oh, di ba? Chut-chut. Yun-yun. Chut-chut. Kamukha ng ano, 
sa witnessing, sabi ko, sa witnessing, pagpapasok ka sa bahay, maghanap ka ng mapupuri mo. Nang sa ganun, makuha mo yung goodwill ng tao. Sabi ko, pagpasok mo, ganito. Ma'am, ang ganda naman po ng bahay ninyo. Salamat. Kamukha ko nung nasa wall yung yun, no? napakaganda. Ah, oo. Galing sa Saudi yan, padala ng mister ko. Ma'am, yun nung nasa tatsang table, napakaganda. Ah, oo. Galing sa Saudi yan, padala ng mister ko. O yung pong display na yun, ibang klase. <laughs> Galing sa mister yan eh, padala ng mister ko. Uy, ang ganda ng anak niyo. <laughs> Galing sa Saudi yan, padala ng mister ko. <laughs> Pero mo, eh, hindi ba naman punong-puno ng kalungkutan yung buhay mo? Amen? Walang kapalit. Walang kapalit. Yung gawin mo lahat ng tama, gaano man kahirap. Sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Kaya ang magulang dapat lahat gagawin para sa anak. Titiisin anumang hirap, anumang sakit, tatalikuran sino man! matiyak niya lang ang magandang kinabukasan ng kanyang anak. Di ba? Kasi si brother ko, may subukan mong kantiin ng mga anak niya. Nakikita mong so dumat gumura, mag-aapo yan. <laughs> Buka mo. Amen? Mga kapatid, kaya, minsan hindi natin alam kung saan tayo lalagay, most of the time we are becoming fool. Because we try to justify something that is not according to the Word of God. So it's a wrong attitude towards what? Who? God? Wrong attitude towards what? Others? Wrong attitude towards? Life and money? And because of His attitude or wrong attitude towards eternity, He lived as if there were no Eternity and sad to say, 90% of people today are living as if they are going to live here on earth forever. And that is why God called him a fool. Why? Because of his attitude toward God. He never thanked God because of his attitude toward others. He never thought of other people because of his attitude toward life and money. He loved money more than God. And he thought that this life will be with him forever. And then because of his attitude toward eternity, he thought that life can only be enjoyed here, forgetting that the best is yet to come. And that is when we are in the presence of God in heaven. Amen? So I hope and I pray that we are not going to be called by God a fool because we are going to be wise because of the Lord. Amen? Father, we thank you for the lessons that you have given us. I pray, Lord,